What do you fear the most? What are your deepest, darkest desires? It knows that it has arrived to induce fear, lust, and despair. But above all, it has a right to spread malice. It strode down the street with purpose and confidence. A few strings of red hair barely holding onto its dry scalp. Waving in the wind. His grin wide and exposing his shiny white teeth stretched and splayed across its pale face. Eyes wide open and pupils shaking as if it were peering into madness a true image of evil unfortunate is too little a word to describe how unlucky it was for this neighborhood that it decided to settle there coming to a halt it planted itself in the middle of the street a tainted weed ready to entwine its roots around anything, everything, and spread its influence to whatever it touched. Its smile slowly dropped into a frown, brow creasing, and expression contorting into that of a pained grimace. What began as a simple jitter, its body seemingly having been possessed and restless waiting in suspense erupted into an uncontrollable spasm something dark and something unholy it made the children whimper in their sleep made men and women scream in their realms of the unconsciousness those were the sounds of despair madness and pain the sounds of the beginning of the end. The first light flashed in a house further down the street. A boy ambled his way through the darkness of his home, struggling to make sense of his surroundings. He manages to find the light switch and repeatedly flicked it on and off, but the dark remained. His instincts were what drew him to his parents through the thickness of the night that occupied every space of the house. But before he even reached the bedroom door, however, the wood shattered, littering the soft carpet floor with sharp pieces. Laying on the ground was the structure of a man, his face masked in blood. Dad! The boy shouted out, trying to run to his side but his mother that stood between them. Tommy, run! There's something wrong with your dad. I need you to run and... But her warning fell flat, and quick to follow was her body as it too became limp and slumped on the ground with a merciless thump. A shadow stood in her place, one that rose up and down taking in large amounts of air with a low and husky tone. Don't you touch my son, you snake! The father shouted through heavy breeze as he wiped the blood from his face. Dad? The boy's voice was shaking with growing tears. His mind riddled with these thoughts that wouldn't seem to settle. Why are my parents fighting? Is mom okay? Should I trust dad? What is going on? Yes, it's me, Tommy. You have to. His father's voice began to break, becoming indistinguishable as it seemed to crack and reconstruct. Dad, what's wrong? Your voice! What's going on? Cry for an answer, he did, but no reply came. Instead, his father inched closer to him, and it became, and it became evident 
that something clearly wasn't right. As it came closer to his silhouette, it seemed to grow. It's bending with every step he took, seeming heavier. His feet pressed ferociously upon the plank floor and made the ground creak with every step. It was the bright white light of the moon spilling into the room that revealed to Tommy the supposed truth that what he saw before him was not father. The creature's skin was an oily red. The muscles on its body rippled with every flex. It growled, squinting hard at him with yellow, glossy eyes. The boy screamed in terror. The creature reached out with sharp black claws protruding from its fingers. Just as Tommy managed to break free from his paralysis and dart in the opposite direction, a ferocious roar rushed in from behind him, but he didn't turn back. He didn't want to. All he could think to do was run, so he did, to get away from the monster that hurt mother, that took away father, and that was coming after him. But death is merciless, more so on this night than any before it. And once Tommy reached the staircase and took his last step, gravity yanked him down. Countless thumbs later, Father finally reached the stairs and stood at the top, his human eyes looking down upon his mangled seed. He slowly turned back and looked at his deceased wife, whose form in his deceitful eyes changed from a large emerald serpent back into the image of the woman he loved. His gaze fell upon his bloody hands, and as the realization struck, all he could do was out in horror. Its crackled echoed on through the night, with every disaster, every death, and cry of misery resonated throughout the neighborhood. It felt its hunger only grow in satisfaction. The damage had been done, countless lives lost, and many minds broken. As day broke, it vanished, as if it were never there to begin with.